Greetings everyone, and welcome to this episode of Fanfic Read Through. Just as I predicted, these last two chapters were hardly more than 5 minutes long. Together they were about 10 minutes. And that's after I shaved off all my awkward pauses and all of that and edits, you know the stuff. So, yeah, I don't really have more to say. Enjoy this last episode of Boiling Point. And I will be back tomorrow with the next story, which is Hell's Trip. One of my more favorites. After that there is the Life's Trial, which has gotten a lot of good positive reviews. And then we have some more fun. And yeah, I'm looking forward to reading them again and reading them to you. So, without further ado, here it is. Boiling Point. Chapter 8 As soon as the door was closed, Danny looked around the room. Seeing no cameras, he floated off his chair and over to the door, listening to the conversation on the other side. What do you think, Scott? asked the officer. You saw the boy when we came in. You can't fake that. His heart was racing. He had trouble breathing. He was shaking and cold, said Mrs. Scott. Danny felt tempted to tell her that the cold was his normal body temperature. He's a scrawny kid, how could he take a beating from a school football star and then send him off to the hospital with possibly broken ribs? The officer asked and Danny could hear the sound of a pen tapping a notebook. Biting his lip, Danny forced himself to stay quiet, even if he wanted to know how badly he had hurt Dash. Martial arts, the EMT said. As Mr. Lancer said, he struck the floor beside Mr. Baxter's face. With the amount of force he described, the boy should have gotten a boxer's break in his hand, but he didn't. He was holding his hand in a perfect angle, bruising his hand and causing the muscles to cramp, but without injuring himself. The pen kept tacking. Officer Grayson, began Mr. Lancer. The school has cameras in the corridor, and I'm quite certain that there is a camera where the two fought. If you don't believe Mr. Fenton's story of the events, then maybe we should check it first. Why didn't you say so sooner? Grumbled Officer Grayson. Show us the footage, if you please. Danny found himself holding his breath. Hearing the three on the other side of the door start walking away, he made a quick decision and turned into Phantom. Going invisible, he flew through the door and followed the three to the security room, which was also the janitor's office. This will only take a moment, said Mr. Lasser, sitting down in front of the two computer screens. How long have you had cameras at school? asked Officer Grayson looking over the teacher's shoulder. A year. The major invested in them when he got elected, together with some other reforms that never stuck. Then he shivered, remembering the horrible school uniforms and strict rules that had made going ghost nearly impossible during school hours. Do you get much bullying going on at the school on the tape? asked Mrs. Scott, looking over her shoulder at Danny without seeing him. Moving on to the other side of the desk, Danny looked at the screen. You have a zero tolerance on bullying here, Mrs. Scott, said Mr. Lancer, using a short command to get around the c- on the computer. But that doesn't mean it isn't happening, she said, moving over to stand beside the officer to see what was happening on the screen. Sadly, that is true, but we can't do anything without the students reporting it. Mr. Lancer clicked on a file and brought up a video of a corridor filled with students. The clips during the day are timed with the school bells, so this was just taken after the bell for the fourth period rang. Lance sped through the first ten minutes of the tape before slowing it down, seeing Danny pass the camera, hobbling along the corridor and out of frame. Maybe another camera have a better angle, said the officer, but Mr. Lancer shook his head and was rewarded for his patience when Danny came back into frame and glanced up. Stop it right there, shouted Officer Grayson. Mr. Lancer stopped the video. I'd be damned, he knew the camera was there. You don't think he planned to let the fight be seen by the cameras? asked Mrs. Scott, surprised. Fenton isn't stupid. I've seen him do this before, said Mr. Lancer, pressing play again. And if you were wondering, there's a file on this computer with some of those moments. Then I raised an eyebrow in surprise. He knew where every camera in the school was, and often used them to ward off Dash from hitting him. But he never thought Mr. Lancer had noticed it. The video kept playing, showing Dash coming into frame and pushing Danny up against the lockers. He wasn't lying about that, said Mrs. Scott, getting everyone's eyes on her. There was bruises on his back from the locks. From those locks. 
They kept watching, seeing Dash punch Danny three times, and the real Danny had to swallow. He saw the moment his eyes went cold. It was scary seeing his own face change, from being in pain and desperate to get away, to simply not caring anymore if he hurt Dash. A lump of ice settled in his stomach, thinking that. He hadn't cared if he hurt Dash. All he'd wanted was to make him stop, to make him feel the pain and fear he was feeling. There was a good right hook, commented the officer a moment later. How can you people allow this to happen, at your school? Well, what was that? Mr. Lancer ignored the comment about the running of the school, pressed rewind and played the next frame slower, capturing the moment Danny had twisted up like a snake and brought them both down, and almost gotten an arm lock on Dash. Martial arts, said Mrs. Scott, her arms crossed over her chest. They went on till the end of the fight, when Mr. Lancer came into the picture, pulling Danny away from Dash, and leaving him sitting in the middle of the corridor, a shocked expression on his face. Looks like the kid told the truth, Officer Grayson said. Looks like self-defense, but we have to see if Baxter wants to press charges against him. The last punch must not have hit him, but it sure looked like a threat. Danny left the janitor's office and flew back to Mr. Lancer's. Sitting down, he covered his face in his hands, letting his cold frost powers take down the bruises as he turned back to Fenton. End of chapter 8 Chapter 9 Epilogue Danny was sitting on the floor of Mr. Lance's office when the teacher and Officer Grayson walked in. Mr. Fenton, what are you doing? asked Lancer, an eyebrow raised, at the pantless teenager. Fixing the stitches, said Danny in concentration, cutting the thread to the last suture, straightening with a scissor, thread and needles in his hands. His school books were lying in a pile beside his backpack and the open first aid kit at his side. A small mirror lay on the floor under his thigh, so that he could see what he was doing. You should have let the doctor do that, said Officer Grayson, walking over to him. He noted in surprise that the stitches were neat and just as professional as a doctor might have done. Like I said, I don't like hospitals, and as I said before, I can fix the stitches myself. He picked up a fresh dressing and covered his handiwork. Where did Mrs. Scott go? he asked. She has other things to take care of said Mr. Lancer, walking around Danny to reach his desk. I tried to call your parents before, but they didn't answer. They used the landline to make some stupid ghost phone detection device, said Danny in a matter-of-fact voice. And you can't reach them on the mobile if they are in the basement, if they don't do something very complicated involving leaning on a generator and banging a mug on the computer. He finished tying off the bandage and started packing his things. You aren't related to those phantoms who fight these ghosts and wreck half the town in the process, are you? As Officer Grayson, realization dawning. No, I'm not related to them. I just live with them and call them mom and dad for fun. Danny stopped, rubbing at temples. He was getting another headache. The officer was about to correct Danny's attitude when Mr. Lancer cut in. Mind your manners, Daniel. Rummaging around in his desk, Mr. Lancer found a Snickers bar. And eat that. Your blood sugar is low. Catching the Snicker, Danny mumbled a thanks. And taking a bath of it, the sweetness tasted off somehow. Like it wasn't really sweet, compared to the taste of fear. The candy was a disappointment. Officer Grayson bent down to Danny's eye level. I'm going to take you home and have a talk with your parents. Are you alright with that? He asked, handing Danny one of the books in the pile. Swallowing the piece of candy, Danny shrugged. I don't really have a choice, do I? He put the last book in his backpack and started tugging on his jeans. Though I will miss the next hour of math and Esperanto as well. He glanced over at Mr. Lancer. The teacher shook his head. It's best for you to go home now. I'll explain things to your Esperanto teacher. He scribbled on a post-it note and handed it to Danny. Make sure that you do those pages in your math book before your next class and I won't give you detention for missing this one. Sweet! Smiled Danny, pocketing the note and getting up on his feet using the desk for support. Closing his eyes for a moment, Danny waited for the world to stop spinning. His headaches was growing more intense. Here. I'll take the bag, offered the officer, before Danny could bend down to pick it up. He looked surprised when he lifted it. You got all the school books in here or something? No, just all the books I need for today. Taking his crutches, Danny turned to Mr. Lancer. He wanted to say something to explain everything, but couldn't find any words to convey everything. I'm sorry, he finally said, before turning to hobble out of the office, Grayson one last step behind him. Danny would have been nervous sitting in the police squad car if Officer Grayson hadn't opened the front passenger door for him. Getting into the car wasn't too easy, his wound sending him stabs of pain up and down his right leg whenever he tried to bend it. 
Finally getting the door closed, Danny sank down into the seat. Put on the seatbelt, ordered Officer Grayson, fastening his own. Danny did as he was told. You didn't bring a jacket? It's pretty cold outside, he asked, starting the engine. Is it? said Danny, digging his hand into his jeans pockets. Grayson didn't say anything else until he turned out onto the main road heading for Fenton Works. Why haven't you reported the other times you got bullied to the teachers? Sighing, Danny looked out the window. Cause then they would just go after easier targets, he said. You mean to tell me that you let Baxter hit you and didn't report it just so that he wouldn't go after any other kids at school? The officer looked at Danny in disbelief. He plays football, said Danny, turning his head to look into the officer's eyes. But I play chess. He smiled tightly. End of chapter 9 This has been Boiling Point, the second story in the series I Am Danny Phantom Through It All. Thank you for listening.